Hello, I'm Nancy Berger. I'm the Director of Outdoor Education here at YMCA Stora Camps and welcome to our classroom. Stora Camps has been around for 102 years and we started out as a, uh, a camp for the YMCA for boys and young men back in 1918 and, and we used five acres of the local farmer's land. Uh, we came up from Toledo, Ohio looking for a place uh, for the boys to be in the summertime and that's how we started and now we're over 1,200 acres of um, different ecosystems, um, land and forests. So um, since you aren't coming to us right now during this time, we are bringing camp to you to show you different things, what's happening at camp because there is a lot still going on at camp and we want to be able to show you uh, different areas, different parts of camp that maybe you've never been to before, which is the beauty of what we can do at this time. Hi, I'm Jim Moore. I've uh, been a naturalist here uh, in the summer times for many years, and I find this to be a very fascinating place. And one of the most interesting parts is the geology, and part of the geology is this lake right here. And uh, today's topic is about uh, the ice block lakes, the uh, kettle lakes, and uh, all the, that goes with it. If you look at the lake, there's, you saw the slope, then there's the flat land, and then there's the lake, and on the other side, mostly flat land. Well, when you look at the lake, think ice, a mile thick. And the ice was left in the glacial runoff. When the glaciers were melting back, there the glaciers were full of rocks, sand, gravel, silt, clay, and when they melt, when the glacier melted, all this material ran out in the uh, meltwater and filled in the depression. And in some cases, there was a, there were ice blocks that were left from the melting glacier, and they got surrounded by the sand and gravel and such. And uh, this outwash, in a lot of cases, was layered. It was called stratified outwash. The ice blocks either were partly covered or fully covered. And when the, when the ice melted then, it took years to, to melt, the, uh, a depression was left in the surface. And if this depression was uh, within the water table, then you'd have a lake. All right, this is a kind of a fun uh, model to make. Uh, modeling is a good technique for uh, thinking through and showing um, and learning about a certain concept. This is about how ice block lakes were formed. You have to use your imagination. Work with me here. We've got um, just a container. We've got two pieces of ice. Now they're not really ice. They're going to, they won't melt, but they, they're the best we can do right now and it'll show what we need to show. A uh, piece of cement and a rock. Okay, so we have one rock that was lying on this, when the glacier was melting back, it was lying it, it represents an ice block that uh, broke off from the glacier as the glacier was melting back. Uh, it's lying on top of the, um, the uh, till, and eventually, look out, the glacier is going to deposit some stuff here. It doesn't deposit it, well, it could deposit it straight down, but more likely it deposited it by running out from the glacier face. And so, in some cases, those ice blocks were buried totally. And in some cases, they were just like half buried. So we've got the sediments from the glacier burying or partly burying the ice block, and then it's going to melt. Now, so if we just wait, it'll melt. But we don't want to wait that long, so we'll go to part two. This is one I did at home using the sand and ice cubes out of an ice maker. And I buried one in here all the way, and it was ice, and it did melt. And when it melted, everything collapsed down above it, of course. Now that's kind of interesting, because these two ice blocks were the same size. This one was just halfway down in the sand, or in the glacial debris, and when it melted, it, uh, left, it, it left this hole here. So here's the depression from the one that was totally buried, here's the one that was half buried. That's kind of interesting because this is bigger than that one. It just has to do with the slumping. Now, um, 
if we wait long enough, this of course will dry. It's wet now. It'll dry and that'll slump down and, and start to fill in the hole again. But um, uh, right now it does show the ice contact ridge. We now have two kettles. These are called kettles. Now if, if there isn't water in it, um, if the water table isn't there or it isn't quite to the surface, you might just get a wetland instead of a lake. So this is how a kettle or a kettle lake is formed. This uh, cornfield on the top of the ridge uh, brings up the topic of what was it, has this land been like through the ages? And now we have, do have quite a bit of farmland. We use, use it mostly to uh, feed the horses or support the horses and support program in general. But this wasn't always that way. Um, when the glaciers first left, first melted back, it was all gravel, just plain old gravel, this whole area. And, uh, and it became like tundra. Plants and animals started coming in from farther south. And um, so it started out with tundra, then a few spruce trees moved in. And then, this is over thousands of years, about 12,000 years ago it started melting back. Then after the spruces, the pines started moving in. And after the pines, the uh, oaks and deciduous trees, other deciduous trees started moving in. And then there was a very a warming period and more of uh, prairie kinds of areas developed and black oak barrens, savannas developed. And that's what was here when the settlers came. Then the settlers, of course, cleared as many trees as possible and planted their crops. We still have a few trees left over from that time. They're big spreading trees, very interesting uh, from the black oak barrens. And we have the pre-settlement conditions here were the lake, some wetlands, uh, oak hickory forest, black oak barrens, and wet prairie. This is kind of a, a neat area because uh, we're standing here, if you look in that direction, there's no ridge. But if you look back towards where we were before, there's a slope that runs all the way down to where we were before. If you go over here, the slope starts again and goes for a quarter of a mile down this way. But what's interesting is that if you look over here, look on the topo map, it's a valley. It's probably the meltwater drew all the gravel down through here and took it out to the lake. And if you go down there at the lake, you have a place where there is a spit, which is a deposit of sand that goes around the corner of a point. And eventually that spit usually connects to the land again. So you have a spit and an embayment, and then when it connects, um, what happened is that over here, that little lake portion, got filled up with um, uh, vegetation and now is a sort of swamp forest. And the spit is a, is a sandy ridge. And then on the other side of the swamp forest is the ice contact ridge. Okay, we just left that area where the ridge disappeared because of the erosion. And now we're back to where it starts again. Uh, it goes all along this area. It, the, the crane cabin is uh, built on the ridge, and the crane was my first cabin when I came here in 1960 with uh, I had rangers in there. Um, and then it continues on down, and you can see the slope uh, going down that way. We'll, we'll get down there uh, in a few minutes. And there are cabins up on top, there's a swamp forest in the middle, and there's a, a the, the spit I was talking about is down uh, the left-hand side. Okay, that big oak down the pathway is a remnant from the time when this was Black Oak Barrens down here. We're going to talk about some of the different ecosystems that are here at the Indian Point complex. The, the bulges on the, on the tree are the lower branches that tended to go right down to the ground. It is normal on an, on an oak uh, barrens, uh, spreading oak. And inside the spit, there was a little bay uh, that was enclosed by the spit, and it was, it's called an embayment. And then if you get on the other side of that, you start, you get to the ice contact ridge again. Uh, there is a pond down in here, in the lower part, that uh, dries up um, in the late summer, but uh, it, it raises a lot of wildfowl uh, 
uh, during the springtime. This is honeysuckle here with the berries, and the birds like the berries, and they spread them uh, profusely. These are Asian uh, honeysuckles, and they're one of the big, they're the biggest problem in the woods. Uh, this is also Asian, or, uh, Asian bittersweet, which tends to choke out other plants. But just as a principle, the invasive plants have to be kept after, or uh, your, all your natural areas is just going to be a sort of a green blur of a few kinds of exotic plants because they outcompete the natives. Okay, we're right down on Indian Point right now, which is one of my favorite places in camp because it has so many different ecosystems within a quite a small area. We're looking out here at Stony Lake. Uh, some of the ecosystems. We have a submerged marsh out here represented by the um, uh, lily pads and the, and the vegetation that's down beneath it. Then over as we go this way, we see emergent marsh. The cattails, which are on the other side of the lake, are also emergent marsh. But anything that grows is rooted in the bottom but grows up through is called emergent marsh. Then if we go up this way, first of all, we would come to a str little stream over there, but it's not a natural stream. It's from the, the big artesian well that's uh, down at the base of the, um, the ice contact slope again. Up here you can see a lot of oak trees and there they are on the ridge, the ice contact ridge that goes up to the more level ground. One of the interesting things to ways to enjoy a natural area is to think about what might have been here and so there's ev some evidence that it was. This part of the ridge down here uh, has all the huge big old oak trees on it. It's not a very big ridge but it's very well drained because of the because of the slope. It's that stratified outwash again, and but it doesn't get enough sun. We think it might be remnant hillside prairie, which is another ecosystem. Okay, we're at the uh, Radenberg Chapel uh, now, and uh, it's built right on the ridge uh, down here, and the ridge goes farther west past the craft shop, down up above, well, it goes from the Crandall cabin all the way down to the Hocking cabin. And, and farther out in towards these pasture. It also goes west down under Drake Lodge, really, and down to the lake house. That steep slope down by the lake house is um, part, of the, part of the ridge as well. Then it goes in front of the dining hall, which was bulldozed in order to get to the waterfront, and then back down to Indian Point. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the information I was able to get to you. I, I've i been in this camp for a long time, but the fun part is that I'm always seeing something new and I always have more questions. And I hope you'll come out and enjoy the place as much as I do.